Hi everyone, it's Monday the 7th of March and it's just gone 7 in the evening. And in this video I've got a whole bunch of various bits of technology I suppose to show you that I've uh, picked up from dumpster diving. Um, there's a lot of sort of telephone related stuff but there's also, I guess it's a computer of sorts and some other security stuff as well. And uh, probably more stuff to come as and when it gets thrown out. So before we take a look at this stuff, you can see some bits behind me. I uh, I guess I should explain where it's all coming from. So um, I can't actually show you it now because it's all dark. But basically, if you went to my front window, which is behind you, and just looked across to the left at sort of an angle, there is a listed building. And that building used to be occupied by the town council. Um, and it had been occupied by them since, I think, the early 1970s, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Somewhere in the 1970s, they um, took tenancy of it. And it was leased to them by North Norfolk District Council, who owns the building. However, um, I think it was like six years ago, J.D. Weatherspoons wanted to purchase the building to um, open a Weatherspoons here in town. So apparently they didn't want to take ownership of the building with a tenant in it so NNDC had to you know basically give the town council the boot and gave them 12 months to get out which I thought was ample time that was nice of them. Um, anyway so they had to get out then it sat empty for four or five years after that and well, it's, technically it's still empty, but now it's being worked on. Um, but Weatherspoons just... The way I see it, Weatherspoons were just messing about and weren't really that interested. Just going by what I've read and whatnot online, you know. Uh, I'm not going to get into details with that, but basically that whole thing fell through um, a couple of years ago. Uh, and NNDC have apparently got hold of some grants to basically restore that building because it is a listed building and they're going to um, lease it out as office space. I don't know if they're going to divide it into separate little offices or what they're doing. So um, for the last three weeks I've had you no know, contractors in there, they're scaffolding up around the building. Um, and they've been basically just one tidying up the outside of the site because there's rubbish and crap everywhere including with the old barn which is just out there um, and uh, you know stripping everything out inside um, quite literally it seems I'm finding all sorts in these skips nothing that would interest me I found the old um, toilet roll dispenser you know one of them white box things with a little slot in the front that you get in a commercial premises <laughs> Um, there is a good set of blinds over there, but I doubt I've got the brackets over there, so I didn't think that was worth picking it up. Although, you know, if I found enough, I would like to put blinds up the lounge window and do away with the curtains. I've never liked curtains, to be honest. Um, although it would go across the bedroom window. I'm, I was planning to take another look later, so I may grab it. I'll have a look. No harm in looking. If I can use it, I will. If I can't, I'll just leave it there. Anyway, <clears throat> so um, yeah, they've just been gutting the place and they are now on their um, skip seven and eight because they've been having two delivered each time. For the first week, they were having two delivered a day. <laughs> God knows what this is costing them in skips, probably over a thousand pounds by now in skips. Um, one of them is actually full and the other one they've now started to full fill rather so I assume they'll have both of those collected again at the same time and another two dropped off. So let's just get into the more interesting bit. I've got some stuff that isn't really that interesting it's just basically foam sockets. I'll just grab a couple to show you. Well I'll grab some of these they can make good junction boxes and whatnot. And the blank plates can come in useful, the blank face plates. 
that's another one. This thing I think lights up. Well, that's to do with the phone system as well. Um, I have had a peek inside it because I actually took it apart to get the wire off out of the way and the two fixing screws because they are literally just ripping things off the wall as you can see. <laughs> I think the plaster might be a bit knackered as they're actually pulling it off with these without actually breaking the box, look. <laughs> um, and from the look of the skip I think they are replastering as well. I think they're just, you know, completely redoing the lot. Gutting it and starting again basically. Yeah, but when I looked at the circuit board, it looked like there was two um, surface mount LEDs in there. And this is like a translucent material from the looks of it, so... Don't know, it might not be. I haven't had a good look at it. was just a quick glance. Uh, I've got a couple of these. They're just Ethernet sockets, so for networking and whatnot. I don't know even where I'll try that again. I don't even know why I picked up a couple of uh, these phone sockets. Don't need them. I've got them. That's pretty much it. Uh, in regards of the uninteresting stuff, this is probably one of my favourite phones. And I actually do want to get this put up on the wall somewhere and connect it up so it works. I've just got to figure a way out. Um, We'll figure out how to wire it, I should say. It's a ringer. It's actually just got bell set 50 amp or 50A written on the back. I doubt that's 50 amp. Um, it's just got this wire connected to it, <laughs> and that is it. Uh, B7 it's connected to. So I assume I would only need two wires, as there's only two wires here. One is on this strip, and the other one is on this strip. Um, yeah, I don't know, but like I said, I would like to, you know, mount it up on the wall and get it to work. You'd probably upset the neighbours, because I bet this isn't quiet, I bet this is quite loud. But I'll tell you what, I'd probably just mute the ringers, if it's possible, on the land phones. Yes, the uh, bracket that was screwed to this end it was like a long metal bracket screwed to this end. I had to take it off because it was all bent. But that's the only bit that was damaged. Um, although, looking at this, I've just noticed there doesn't appear to be any screw holes to mount it to the wall. Um, well, it doesn't matter, I can make another metal bracket up if I have to. It's not a biggie. Right, so I think that's the stuff from down there. I've got a big item through there to show you, and another big item here, and some lots of big items here. <laughs> Let's start with this on the desk, shall we? We might get a couple of other bits up off the floor as well. So, right at the front here, and I'm not sure what it is. It's got radio visor written on it, and again, this is one of the items they managed to get off the wall without breaking it. But that's what's on the inside a set of fuses, and what I thought were neons, but there's no circuitry in there to drive them as neons. So I'm not really sure what those six bulb things are, or what this is even for. <laughs> um, it's got an earth connection on it. Post office connectors there, so that's your phone going in. That's kind of showing its age, because this might have been around when uh, the post office still owned the phone lines. Yeah, well, I thought that was just an interesting little thing, so I'll grab that. meant to be clearing crap out and here I am collecting it again. Then we've got two little metal enclosures here. I've got the lids for these. And there's this one. which has got a very large IC on it. Uh, I was actually wondering if this was like for the um, motion sensors for the burglar alarm because that's pretty much what most of this is. Apart from these two boxes here. 
Um, yeah, I can see lots of resistors. So I know absolutely nothing about this. And not all of the wires are actually connected up. Look, some of them, some of the colours from each cable coming in have actually been just rolled up there. Uh, we've got one lot of blue, red, black and yellow here. Then we've got black, red, green and white rolled up there. And some more black and reds, yellow and blue all wired up there. And down the bottom here. I don't know. But I've got the sensors here and I'll show you those in a minute. The other one, I don't get it. This circuit board, I believe, is actually the same size as this, but it's in a wider metal enclosure. That's just got four relays on it. That's about all I can tell you with that one. Four relays and I'm not sure. Are they diodes or something? I don't know what them components are just above my finger. They look silver though. I don't think they're diodes because they, there's no um, you know stripe on them to indicate. Where is the? Oh, no, that could have just been the light reflecting. Yeah, I don't know. When I get a chance, we have to do a bit of googling. I think just to well, Google the whole alarm system, I suppose. Let's make what's called a galaxy. And to be honest, I don't think this alarm system has been used in donkey's years. I've got a feeling it wasn't even used um, when the place was occupied. And I'll, I'll tell you why later, why I think that. In fact, I can show you why. Right. These look like they are just like junction boxes for phones and networking. There's two of them. This one's just got a big K on the lid. And even though this one looks absolutely identical, you see when you put them side by side like that, they pretty much do look it. Colour is very slightly different. Could be age though. But this one is actually a British Telecom one. So I'd actually just thought these might be handy for other low voltage connections, you know. I can't remember what the voltage is down a phone line now. Is it something like 50, 60 volts? Something like that? I don't know why I'm thinking that. I could be right, I could be wrong. Something else if I remember I'll have to uh, Google. But I just thought, you know, for like 12 volt connections or junctions or something, like for a model railway for example, I thought they'd be useful for that. Maybe. Maybe not. Right, we'll get these out of the way next. So these are simply just three motion sensors for an alarm system. You can tell they're not very modern. They're still in good condition though. I'm surprised there's only three, or at least I've only found three. Whether or not there's still some up in there, but you know, it's not many really, is it? Unless they, you know, were trying to save money and just had three sensors put in the main hallways. Uh, but you know there is an upstairs and downstairs. Maybe they just haven't got to take any other stuff down yet. Uh, right, this is another part of the uh, Boigler alarm system. I think this is like a power supply thing. We've got a little green LED indicator light right in the middle of the front panel. I wouldn't mind doing something with this box, turning it into like a display or something. Or just an illumination on it. But yeah, we've got a little switch at the top there, transformer, and a circuit board, and a bunch of wires basically. We've got 240 coming in there through the transformer. There is only the single tap on the transformer because we've only got the two wires there. Uh, yeah. I don't know what the switch is for, if that's a cut-off switch, so it cuts off the circuitry when it's opened and connects it when it's on, or if it's designed to trigger the alarm to prevent tampering. No idea what it is. Ow. I do know it's got quite a bit of weight. Right. And a 
very quickly. So I don't want this video to go on for too long. I'm trying to keep my videos as short as possible. We've got the main box. Now the only thing I haven't found yet is the um, control pad, the keypad. Because obviously to activate it and put it into different modes and pick settings and whatnot, you'd have the keypad. Haven't found that. I found just about everything else except that. And I'm assuming there's um, some CCTV cameras in there as well. And I'll show you why I think that in a minute too. There might be. Unless this was something that was left in storage. Um, but when I saw it, it's on the floor, I couldn't resist that. Right, so this cover should... It's even got the paperwork here, look. All the instruction manuals. And the office hours. <laughs> and numbers. There we go, I've got some more paperwork in here as well, and a receipt that's just fell on the floor. Um, some big IC, a lot of soccer to the IC in there as well. And a big transformer. I'll, I'm planning to do, you know, a video or maybe two, looking a bit closer and giving you all a bit more of a, I was going to say in-depth look, but I know absolutely stuff all about this. I can give you a closer look and just basically tell you what I see. <laughs> uh, it'd be great if I could set like the camera up there or something looking straight down. That would make life so much easier if I can do that. Yeah, we've got more paperwork, lots of connections. There is something printed on the silk screen on the circuit board, but I can't quite read it. And what wires there for the 12 volt battery backup? And it did have a 12 volt battery in it. Ah, oh, that screw is actually quite sharp. Don't put something heavy and sharp on your leg. Is that just a spare fuse? That's rolling around in there. I'm just wondering if that's a spare fuse or if it's actually fallen out of something. I can't see it falling out. I can see some glass fuses on there. Maybe that is just a spare. I'll put back with it. Yeah, but uh, I've got the battery here and it is, it's dead. I even just for the hell of it tried to put some charge in it, but it won't even acknowledge my charger is connected. So there it is. All right, I'm just going to wheel closer. There's the dates. I'll read them out on you. Oh, in fact, I've just found another date on this side. <laughs> I don't know if that was the inst that might be the installation date. This is in black market. 28th of the 8th, 1998. I was in high school. Um, but on the front here, on this sticker, there is a number of dates. We have got uh that don't make sense. This side's got twenty eighth of the eighth ninety eight and this one has got twenty third of the tenth ninety eight. Hmm, I'm not quite sure there. It's also or oh, the latest date on this I presume it's the service date. Is 11th of the 9th, 2000. No other service dates on this. Um, and I cannot imagine, you know, this battery would have lasted. Uh, should we say 22 years ish, 22, 23 years, <laughs> you know, without being changed in that time. So either the system was used without a backup battery, if that's possible, or. I just never bothered, you know, getting the system fixed or even using it. I don't know. I suppose they, they may have never bothered you and just not told anybody that it didn't work. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. You know, considering a town council has a budget. Just saying, you know, I wouldn't blame them. Right. Um, I was just deciding whether to go back to the phone theme or now let's stick to the um, security theme for now. 
as this is technically the last item to show and I believe I could connect some of my CCTV cameras to this and I could potentially you know have a CCTV system dotted about the place because I found this <laughs> in that cute little C um, CRT CCTV monitor four channel observation system with plug <laughs> with a 5 amp fuse in it apparently and a cable tie for some reason that's going to annoy me, hang on that will just annoy me if I leave it on there very dusty so I don't know if this hasn't been used in donkey's years that was put in a store cupboard or if just for like the six years the building hasn't been occupied that's just the amount of dust that's collected up on it, I have no idea um, what have we got on the back? 12 volt and ground and I'm not sure what the other two is, it's got um, NO connected and N dash slash, oh no, is that C? that could be N slash C from the looks of it and showing it connected and then this one N slash O not connected. No idea what that is. We've got AC input, 50 or 60 hertz. Um, four cams. That might be a problem. I hope I could get at least one of the cameras from there. Because um, I don't think mine have got that connection. Uh, and then we've got X something, what's that extension? External um, video out, audio out. Oh, video in, audio in. I suppose I could run it from one camera then, because I've got audio and video in. Actually, with video in. And an RCA jack. I wonder if I could use it as a TV. Just for shits and giggles. <laughs> I don't think it would be a very good TV, but you never know. Power button there. One, two, three, four, auto. So, ah, so you can switch between the four cameras here. I don't know what it is. That one could be... Oh, I presume audio out would be to a VCR. Oh, sorry, I'm off camera. I was getting carried away looking at the front of this. It's a um, Vantage. Oh, this screen has even got a mic. So does that mean, then, yeah, you could talk. <laughs> it's got a talk button. So you could actually talk to people through the camera. <laughs> oh, that is sweet. I don't know what this is, left, right, up, down, ah! Is that so you, ah! You could move motorised cameras with it. Ah! <laughs> and you've got an on button for that as well. That might be what this is for then. To take power out to the, to at least one motorised camera I suppose, unless when you switch camera on the front, it switches, you know, power to the next camera. I don't know. It needs a good clean now. Maybe this week I'll find a camera at the skip somewhere. And hopefully it doesn't get buried. If not, I'll have to just have a look around and see if I can find something. Um. Right, let's look at this, shall we? That's a big box with a little box connected. <laughs> um, and this is showing its age, so it's got the old 1970s, 80s British Telecom logo on there. Um, property of British Telecom. Um, well, I also have to say, that is the biggest fucking phone cable I've ever seen connected to anything. Pardon me, French. Um, I don't know 
on what's holding it. Oh, I see what's holding the cover on. Ah, okay. It looks like big connections. Big A connections in there. Um, I haven't got a flat screwdriver at hand, otherwise I'd have just popped these open so we could have a look. Uh, I might be able to find one in a second. I'm going to have to have a shunt about to get the other big item in here to show you. Uh, da -da. Yeah, I can see... I can see into it there. Box Connection 301A. So I think it is just like a telecommunications junction box. Of sorts. Oh, network test and termination point. There we go. It actually says it on the front if I bother to read it. And then we've got whatever this is connected to it as well. And we've got a wire hanging out there where it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be coming through the hole. Um, this was with the monitor, the CCTV monitor, big old length of cable. Just, sorry, I just caught the tripod. <laughs> big, big old length of um, just normal RF cable. Right. This bit is bloody heavy. But I am looking forward to having a look at this. Oh, Christ. It is a business communication manager. Or a BCM200 for short. It's actually got it written there, BCM200. Lots of symbols on the front here that I have no idea what they are. I think this is meant to have hard drives in it because it has got a hard drive symbol right up here. I bet that's what this um, big gaping hole is for. A couple of hard drives. Yeah, that is actually bloody heavy. I wonder if I've got a hard drive like connecting to that. It's a definite maybe. Um, there's not really a lot on this. I haven't seen like a, uh, a monitor socket on it. There is a thing there for monitor and keyboard, unless it's had a specific monitor and keyboard. It looks like a serial port to me. Don't know what that symbol is. There's two Ethernet jacks. Two USB sockets which don't look like they've ever been used. I mean, one of them is literally just blocked up with dirt. And on the back, it's not a great deal either. It's just a power supply, big switch and a fan. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at this. We'll do that on another video as well. Once I've got the kitchen sorted. Because I'm playing around with computers in there, I'm sorting them out. Whee, you son of a bitch! And also, found this in a completely unrelated place. Um, I took some rubbish down and it was in the bins out back. With about four other kettles. Um, this one was actually the cleanest out of them all. Um, but it is quite old. So it's got that on it. I haven't made kettles with that plug on them for ages. That's why we call them a kettle lead over here, by the way. And three prong plugs that computers use and a lot of other devices use these days. Yeah, we, that's why in Britain we call them kettle leads, because originally they were on here. And then they went with the um, cordless approach, where the power's in the base. Which I actually think is a much safer idea. But I don't know if this is going to work. I'm interested to find out, but I don't want to plug it in while the PC is on. Because I don't want it to trip out. <laughs> but I don't know why there was like four others of various kettles of various ages in the bin. I was going to see if I could go and grab another one, but I was too late. Unfortunately, right, I need to clear some room this way. In fact, what I can do... I'll return you that way. I've not even had a good look at this yet. <laughs> but it's on a big board. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think those boxes are exactly like that other one that I showed you, which is on the floor. Hang on. I'll get the camera. I'm just trying to get comfy. <laughs> Yeah, these two boxes on here, they look 
Even though they haven't got the, um, oh, one has. Whee! It's not actually heavy, it's just awkward. Yeah, these are the same as what I showed you a minute ago on the floor. Um, we've got a telephone socket and whatever this is. And apparently I'm actually holding this upside down. Ooh, power switch. I've got another one of those somewhere exactly like that. Let me just turn this around. Yeah. This one. Looks like that's being... It doesn't look like it's being used to switch power, or maybe it has got telephone wires going into it. Disconnect main supply and exchange line before opening cover. Because I bet as I was a, used as an office, I bet each office had like an extension. Which is what all this gear would have been for, no doubt. <clears throat> you know, I suppose each one would have had an extension number. You know, until now, I didn't think such stuff actually existed. Well, I suppose I did, but... I never really thought about it that much. Now, it looks like this was in some sort of cupboard, maybe, is it on a board? I don't want the board, I'm going to take everything off of this and I'll probably take the board back where it comes from. <laughs> I was only interested in what was stuck on it, but it's cold outside and I didn't want to mess around trying to take it all apart out there. how old this stuff actually is. I'll have to see if I can um, get some model numbers or something and Google it. Because um, I bet some of it's probably older than it actually looks to me. I would have said 80s if I was going to guess. Actually it's probably been disused for a long time. I bet this was installed for back in the day when um, uh, you'd call your local council, you know. Because I can remember when I was a kid, mum would actually go into the council office to pay her rent. And she actually had to go in that building to pay her rent. So I suppose they had phone lines and things set up back then as well, so you could ring them. I bet that's what all of this was for. And I bet when everything went digital and online, that this lot probably hasn't been used for a good 10 or more years, I guarantee it. <clears throat> but yeah, bet it's what it's for. I bet that um, communications manager computer thingamabob on the floor, I bet that played like a, um, a tune when you're on hold. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of as to why a little town council would have needed this. <laughs> um, well, apart from security, that's obvious. To be honest, I just said that security monitor would have been like early 2000s, probably about the same age as this um, burglar alarm system actually, which I'm going to guess would have been around sort of 1998, going by the dates on the battery, that is. There might be some further information on the various bits of paperwork that came with it. Unfortunately, that receipt thing that fell out is too faded to read. Oh, no, it could be older. I've got 11th of the 10th, 94 on this one. Just to show you, I'm not kidding. There we go. I think these are service papers from the looks of it. Yeah, record of operational checks. Section 4.1. I guess I'm finding this interesting because it isn't the sort of stuff a 
you know, your average Joe like me would come across on a daily basis. This is commercial stuff. Oh, this one's got several dates on it, actually. There's like several dates when um, the alarm had actually gone off. One being 27th of the 12th, 2000. 16th of the 17th. If that's true, that didn't have many um, alarm activations. There's another one there. It's only got one listed on this one. video going through this paperwork at some point. Quite a few bits of it here. What's this? A record of operational checks, uh, system attributes. 11th of the 9th, 92. Uh, so that battery is probably a lot newer than the system itself then. shows how long it's been since that whole building has had a proper um, refurb though doesn't it it's 2022 and I find dates so far on this paperwork as far back as 1992 which would put that at what 30 years I feel old can I go and get my walking stick now <laughs> 30 years no Probably about 29, 29, 30 years, something like that. Well, well I'm 38. And I was born 83. Anyway, I'm going to take that back with this. There's a battery check date scrawled on the back of this box as well. 13.92 volts, uh, 23rd, the 3rd, 98. this on my leg and keep stabbing it with a screw so there we go problem solved I've got that one can I get the other one out pull this just rip this off the wall look there's one on the plugs the wall plugs and a magnet on the back of this and you just seen that to prove it's a magnet I don't know what I'm going to do with this stuff once I'm done making videos on it. Don't know if anyone would have a use for like the circuit boards or something. I can't see anything that I would want to salvage off of these circuit boards myself. Maybe the power supply board here, I might be able to do something with that. One amp PSU board. So I'm saying one amp. How much power does it kick out? Twelve volt, I presume, as that's the battery backup voltage. Well, thirteen point nine two volts if you want to split hairs. I should have just looked at the power cable for the clue of when that was installed. <laughs> it's in the old colours for one, red, black and green and yellow. Red for live, black for neutral, green and yellow for the earth. But it's got white PVC, which if memory serves correctly was quite popular back in sort of like the 80s and early 90s until they went to grey. So, yeah, I should have... Uh, ooh. Is that where that fuse come out of? Oh, it does! <laughs> it did actually fall out of somewhere. It fell out of... There. The mains bit. 
the alive has actually fused. Sure, shut on the other paper. I'm sure, shut them. I'm doing my Sean Connery impression again. Unintentionally. Oh, I thought that was another date down there, but it isn't. Um, I'm going to leave the cover off of this because I'm going to take this bloody bit of cable off out of the way. Whereas if I did that enough, I could snap it off. Nah, I'll just I'll get a screwdriver in there and undo it. Oh, right. That is it for now, unless over the next few weeks or however long I find anything else. Pardon me, there's an absolute, probably almost a metric ton load of bloody um, phone cable in that skip. Um, that looks all old, tatty and manky, so I think if I was actually going to rig anything up like that, ring out, I'm going to use new cable. Pardon me. I did rescue some decent bits from a stepdad for his model railway. Uh, took those over yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. So, uh, yeah, this video has gone on for what, 45 minutes now, so I'm going to shut down. And, uh, yeah, so I'm not sure what the next video is going to be. It's either going to be looking at some of this stuff a bit closer, or I'm going to be in the kitchen. Actually, I'll probably be in the kitchen either way. Or I'll be doing um, something with the computers. I want to set up a test bench and get some of my bits and bobs tested. I've got a whole load of like um, CD, DVD, ROM drives. I don't actually know if any of them work. I've just kept them from computers and whatnot. In fact, I put one on a friend's computer and it turned out to be faulty. So I'm going to go through them and test them. I'm going to make up a test bench of some sort. I've actually got a motherboard on the worktop right now. I could use that. I'm sure I've got a hard drive or an SSD somewhere I can borrow that's got Windows 10 already installed on it. So it's going to be one or the other. I haven't decided which I want to do yet. <clears throat> anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope you will uh, stay tuned for a future video taking a closer look at some of this stuff. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.